Model Engineering for Beginners. This is part 50. Machining cast iron flywheels and wheels in general can be difficult, owing to the curious phenomenon known as chattering. In this episode, I show how and why this occurs. This is a Grasshopper beam engine from Stuart Models. It was bought as a machine kit. Overall, the machining quality of this kit was of a very high standard, and it would have been fine if the man who assembled it hadn't have drilled out the flywheel, which then became a rattle fit on the crankshaft, and a bush had been fitted that was also very loose. This is the flywheel, after I bored out the centre, rebushed it properly, and fitted one M6 grub screw, instead of the two 2BA slot-headed grub screws, in a futile attempt to true up the flywheel. I initially fitted the flywheel on a mandrel, and as the centre hole wasn't fully true, neither was the outside edge. This is the flywheel after its second coat of paint, and as you can see, some of the paint is on the outside edge, but this is not a problem, because the final part of this job is to true up the rim of the flywheel. The original 2BA holes for the grub screws were both damaged. I re-threaded one of them to M6. And now, with an M6 Allen type grub screw, I can get a really good grip on the crankshaft. After I made the crankshaft, I cut it to length, and I ended up with a small bit of it left. And I'm going to use this small piece as a mandrel to slightly turn both of the outer edges of the flywheel so it runs perfectly concentrically. The job begins by facing across the front of this piece. I'm turning away the small part that was left when after the parting off procedure, I separated the two parts of the crankshaft. A word of caution when removing small pieces like this, be careful, because at this final stage, the metal that you're cutting is hard enough to snap off the carbide tip. In this clip, I'm center drilling the piece of bar, which will allow me to support it using a live center once the flywheel is fitted, ready for the turning job. It's important when drilling centre holes to make sure they are deep enough so that the centre point doesn't bottom on the drilled hole. When I got into the job, I did actually drill this hole a bit deeper, but here it is, still a bit on the shallow side. I fitted the flywheel onto the mandrel and tightened the grub screw. A good tip at this stage would be to fit the grub screw, tighten it onto the mandrel, then slacken off the grub screw take the flywheel off the mandrel and drill a hole at the point where the grub screw had marked the shaft. But really for this job I'm not going to be putting much pressure on the work so I didn't need to do that. I'm starting the job using my Boxford lathe. This is the lathe that I work on the most frequently. As soon as I start to take a fine cut the chattering occurs almost immediately. Chattering is caused by a resonant frequency being set up in the metal. In this clip, the noise sounds like a violin bow being scraped across the strings. This is a very mild chattering, and just look what it does to the surface of the metal. I'm using replaceable carbide tipped tools, and in this clip I've changed the angle of the tool, and the chattering gets worse. I'd better mention that this is a tutorial, so I'm actually trying to create chatter by getting the speeds, the feeds, and the tool angles wrong on purpose. The annoying thing about chattering when turning flywheels and locomotive wheels is it often doesn't occur until the final cut. In this clip, I'm just checking that the grub screw is tight because the resonant frequency is notorious for vibrating fixings loose. Also what I've just done is change lathes, just in case you didn't notice. I've fitted the mandrel into the chuck of my Myford ML7 r lathe. And now the chatter has got much worse. Is this anything to do with the fact that the live centre isn't pressing hard enough against the centre hole in the mandrel? I need to sort that out, but the real problem is the lathe tool tip. It's okay for general work, but not good enough for this job. And now, it's top tip time. Or maybe I should say, it's new tip time. It's not just that though, 
I've changed the spindle speed by engaging back gear and moving the countershaft belt onto different pulleys. It doesn't seem to be chattering. It's at times like this that I wish I had power cross feed on this MIFID. This chattering is caused by a combination of different factors. For instance, the spindle speed of the lathe being too high and spinning the work too fast, as well as the rate of traverse and sharpness, of course, of the cutting tool. This is a very slow process, time to speed it up for the video. That cut was actually okay, but I'm going to try and mess it up because this is a tutorial, so I'm changing the angle of the tool to see what a difference it makes. These flywheels have some lugs cast in, and the strange noise that's been made at the moment is the cutting tool hitting each of these lugs in turn because I'm pulling it backwards. After the cutting tool stops cutting intermittently and reaches the solid, contiguous metal, the noise changes, but there's not much audible chattering. What I'm trying to show in this video does not apply to industry. It applies to lathes in a home workshop. That's why I started on my Boxford lathe, then I went to my Myford lathe, and now it's time to work on my old Smart and Brown lathe. These days I don't use this very much in the videos, because I get silly comments. I am aware that quite a lot of people do not have large tool room lathes in their workshops. But I do, and I like it. I'm only using it in this instance to show that it has a power crossfeed. And at the moment I'm using a cutting tool that is not ideal for the job and did not give a very good finish. I ended up changing the cutting tool and then I got a very good finish on the flywheel. This is the other side of the flywheel that you can see. And once again, I used a cutting tool that wasn't right, and the speed wasn't right, and the feed wasn't right, and that's why this side of the flywheel looks the way it does. And that is it for this episode. More fun with chattering in the next one. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.